I'm going to 112% my save file in Hollow Knight. By collecting the remaining charms, completing the Grim Troops quest, and beating Pantheon of the Night in God Home. Now back to where it all began. King's Pass. Why, you may ask? Well, I want to know why there's this area right next to me in this part of the map. Yet I seemed walled off from it. Aha! A secret passage. My plan for the last 12% of this game is to first find the charms, then I'll start the DLC's story. Speaking of which, the Fury of the Fallen has been obtained. I whip out the map once again looking for anomalies like this seemingly incomplete connecting route of Crystal Peak. Turns out, there was indeed nothing there. But this miner made me accidentally swing at the wall revealing a secret entrance, leading me to the deep focus charm. Next stop is going to be the Lake of Oon, because I don't remember anything happening over there. Oh, that's right. I never came back here after becoming immune to acidic waters. There doesn't seem to be anything too special here. Oh my goodness! Wait. Who are you? Where'd you go off to? I never got to tell you. I'm in love with the shape of Oon. Anyways, I just realized I've had this button pin since my last video. Ugh, these things again? Shut up and let me pass. What are you hiding in Weaver's Den? Soon after, it became apparent that I didn't have the capability to launch myself here before. And now I'm back to grab the Weaver Song charm. That's 104% done. That means we're already a third of the way done through the video, right? Right? I'm sure there's nothing to worry about. In fact, I'm going to check in with my grub friends to see if they know where the Grim Troop is. Where is everybody? You ate them all? The horror! You'll pay for this, you sick son of a gun! Happy, happy, happy! Talk about a dreary start to our next adventure. The beginning of the Grim Troop's quest can actually be found here in the Howling Cliffs with this large bug corpse. After dream nailing the dead insect, a bundle of reddish coals appears nearby. Striking at the rocks sends sparks flying, igniting the surrounding torches. The chamber shakes and rocks crumble from the ceiling, signaling the circus has come to dirt mouth. Inside the main tent was an accordion player, Babala Geno, and the master of the carnival himself, Grim. Olente. Since I lit the lantern that summoned his troop, I supposedly have a part to play in their ritual. He gives me the Grim Child charm, then asks me to gather the flames from his kin. Not only that, I have to bring along the Grim Kid to know where I'm going. Always the babysitter. Always the damn babysitter. So here's the deal. I have to hunt down three flame holders, then report back to Grim. I find it odd that he wants me to kill his family, but eh, asking nicely is overrated. And just like any extended family, these guys can be annoying to chase after. Playing the waiting game, then going in for the attack seems to work best. And if I charge up a great slash beforehand, it's game over for them. Flame consumed. I repeat the process at two other locations. Find the kin, kill the kin, and consume their flames. Here you go, Grim. Oh, so they're not for Grimm. They're for the child. Well, I guess that means it's time to hunt down the chubby uncles. It's more or less the same as the other kin, except they spray more fire. Once again, I go track the other two at separate points in Hollow Nest, then report back to Grimm. This time, he doesn't give the child back. Instead, he snaps his fingers, which turns on the lights, revealing a crowd awaiting entertainment. Thus, we begin our duel. It's my first go around with him, so the goal isn't necessarily to win, but to learn Grimm's patterns. First, he puffs up his cloak, then while floating, releases fireballs horizontally. The bulk of his attacks have a particular snappiness to them. One after another, they keep coming. Fire bats from his cloak, spikes shoot up from the ground, dive attacks and lunges. Trying to land an attack on him while he's performing his aristocratic acrobatics was definitely doing more harm than good. It became clear what the strategy needed to be. I needed to prioritize dodge dodging everything, absolutely every move he threw at me except for two of his behaviors. The only time I would allow myself to go in for the attack was when he summoned his fire bats, since he would leave himself vulnerable when doing so after I leapt over them. The other behavior I would take advantage of was his spikes. I'd simply pull off a quick heal or two during it. Then it was back to the dodging. If he started on the ground, that meant he would swipe before launching into the air with an uppercut, which was then followed by falling fire. Contrast that to him first appearing airborne where he dives then dashes. Focusing on evasion during these assaults may have made the battle go on longer, but for me, it was the right choice and I kept living because of it. Slowly, I was making progress. Every mistake was followed by a fast recovery thanks to the quick focus charm. With these methods executed properly, it was time to put an end to the circus act. 
No one died because this was all just for show, but at least the crowd showed their appreciation through their applause. The Grim Child has grown even more, having been strengthened by her performance, and this is all Grim has to say to me. Really? At least he gave me a charm notch for winning. But man, I gotta go gather more flames. You all know the drill at this point. The new flame wielders have a couple new tricks up their sleeves. And so does my grim child. <laughs> That's one down. That's two down. That's three. Wait, you're not a grimkin. You're the accordion player. Before handing over the flame, Brum, the accordionist, explains how their troop are slaves to the repeating ritual as the Grim Child too. He feeds the flame to my companion, then says the following. If you wish to silence the endless song, hmm, meet me where it began. Hmm, should I help Brum betray his master or should I keep the show going as planned? While I think about it, there's another tent I haven't visited yet that houses that plum maggot divine. Ah, that charm! Beautiful, most precious. My precious. Precious? Give Fragile Heart charm? Knock yourself out. I never use it. Uh, she ate my charm? Give them to me, your Geo. Give me your Geo and I'll give you a gift. 12,000 Geo? Are you crazy? Are you out of your mind? There's only one person I know that has that kind of dough. They took all my money. All of it. Here you go, Tina, you fat lard. Ugh. 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 I think I've made my decision. Brum, let's burn this ritual to the ground. <laughs> The Grim Troop was banished from Hallow Nest. We did it, Brum! Sego Nala! Hold up, is this Brum? He seems to have lost his memory and is unsure why he's here. Well, he seems happier now and he gives me the carefree melody charm to commemorate our new friendship. The last chapter of the Hollow Knight's journey was upon us. To access the high heavenly content that the Godmaster really is, I needed to dive deep below the royal waterways into the junk pit where a cocoon was chained with a simple lock. Which meant I needed to go back to the Colosseum. Not for a trial per se, rather to go around the arena to crack open a breakable wall that leads to a secret area. Hey, get back here! You can't make a Gollum reference! It's already been done in this video! My gosh, can you not stand still for one freaking second? And where did you get these portable spikes that expand when thrown? Stop freaking out and let me kill you! <sighs> you leave me no choice. It's time for my sneak attack! Aha! Ha! Die, Smeagol! Jeez, what a hassle that was for a simple key. Whatever, it's sarcophagus time. Um, you dropped this. They're not responding, so I go pick up the God Tuner, an item that grants me access to a very special place within the God Seeker's mind. Blasphemy! Blasphemy? I didn't say anything sacrilegious. They couldn't stop me. I had entered the God Home. Just past the other God Seekers was the atrium that contained the dreaded Pantheons. Four series of boss rush challenges that I needed to attain that coveted 112% status. There were other rooms as well, including the Hall of Gods, but for this video, I'll be solely focused on only what is required. First, with the Pantheon of the Master. Starting off with the Vengeful King, I get the inkling I'll be facing some of the early bosses during this set. Easy enough. Hop and down air. Gru's mother is next. Don't be an idiot, and she's done for. The false knight doesn't even get to pull off an attack before I knock him out. Massive boss charger can be avoided easily, and this is Hornet in her first form. Essentially a free win. Halfway there brings me into a resting room where I can fully recover my health and soul before continuing the second half of the challenge. Let's carry on. Gorb is Gorb. Need I say more? Then there's this load of crap. Oh, no! Shut up! The Soul Warrior goes for the same dive attack over and over again. Would you all stop moving around? 
so frustrating! And the brooding Moloch gets a lucky shot before I slice them open. Before the Master Pantheon's finale, I am confronted by the God Seeker who clearly states their disapproval of me being here, hoping the gods will punish, obliterate, and destroy me. I hate to break it to you, but I'm pretty sure Nail Masters Oro and Mato aren't gods. You're not a god? You lied to me? However, of course, right after I claim they're not gods, I get pummeled by the duo. I had never fought them before, and I didn't know what to expect. Biggest lesson I learned was to not try to heal against them both. So yeah, I lost to them. Actually, at the start of this battle, Oro fights alone. It's not a big deal because he telegraphs all of his attacks before lunging at you. It's when both of the brothers get involved is when the difficulty spikes. They get me really good when I'm cornered against this wall, which forces me to retreat to the other side. Once I had the space I needed, I could evade their individual strikes since they would tend to not go right after the other. It was only my second attempt, so I still almost died, but once I was able to best one of them, it was easy to find moments to heal. Not long later, both of the brothers had been defeated, finishing the first Pantheon. Three to go. Now to enter the Pantheon of the Artist. Zero's difficulty was a zero. The Crystal Guardian had no bench to fight for. The Soul Master had his own way of dive attacking compared to the Soul Warrior. And two of Blobbles were tedious to face at once, but like the Nail Masters, once the first went down, the second one was cake. The same applied to the Mantis Lords. Soon after, though, a regular boss would impede my progress. No, I'm not tired talking about Paddle Ball Marmu, I'm talking about Nosk. I remember being reckless with this guy during my 100% video. Since I was so far into the late game at that point, I barely put any effort and barely won just because I had the kit to do so. On a future attempt, I discovered Nosk's greatest weakness, ledge camping. <sighs> And then he's mixing up fastball versus drift. Good observation. Yuji King has a stock lead. We've seen this before. <laughs> he's not going to engage. Nosk was the only main hiccup I had during this trial until I learned that cheap tactic. Then Fluke Marm and Broken Vessel were disposed of shortly after. The God Seeker lectures how I'll be punished, and the finale with Paintmaster Shio begins. This is going to become a common excuse for future Pantheon bosses, but I really don't know what to expect from this battle on my first try. It didn't seem too bad overall though. Just needed to learn Shio's patterns. And I haven't touched my charm since arriving in God Home. So here's how it's going down from here. Fragile Strength for, well, strength. And it doesn't break in God Home. Quick Focus, well, for quick focuses. Sharp Shadow is low key MVP, Nail Master's Glory for faster charge attacks, and Long Nail to increase range. As helpful as these charm changes were, it was paying attention to Shio's paintbrush that mattered most. When the paintbrush is purple, Shio unleashes a great slash that range droplets right after. When yellow, it's a long range attack. When blue, he performs a normal strike with flinging blobs. And when he leaps above center stage, he swipes red paint downward. After most attacks, I dash in with a sped up great slash, thanks to Nail Master's glory. Sharp Shadow became a new favorite of mine since it inflicts damage anytime I dash through an enemy with Shade Cloak. So even if I didn't have the guts to attack, saving myself would actually whittle down their hit points as well. Two down, two to go. Pantheon of the Sage, here I come. Ah, uh, Ken from the B-Movie, we meet again. Match point! You can just start packing up, honey, because I believe you're about to end it! I... I lost to Hive Knight? I don't know how I lost to the first boss, but let's just forget it ever happened. Elder Who is considered difficult enough to be in the third pantheon? Do people really have a problem dodging this guy's springs? The Collector too? I would put both of these guys below Nosk, especially in terms of who's more frustrating to deal with. Anyways, I then lost to God Tamer, which I found odd because I beat her on my first try in the Coliseum. But maybe it's because I only fought them once that I wasn't ready for them in a boss rush mode. Nonetheless, I wasn't going to forget their moves again on succeeding attempts. However, this cycle of forgetfulness would repeat itself with Grim. What are you doing, Andrew? Don't attack what he does! You gotta wait for the fire bats, remember? Now on to Galleon, the item spammer. Get that cheat out of here. Umu is next. I just gotta wait for Quirrell to help out. Okay, Quirrell, any time now. Other jellyfish are swarming in and the electricity is more shocking than I'd like it to be. Where are you? I'm over here. Oh yeah, Quirrell isn't around anymore. I guess I'll have to explode Umu with its own sea jellies, which can be difficult to pull off. Actually, no, it's not. Just shoot some shade soul and whoop bam Problem solved. Hornet, 
Been there, done that. Thou art painfully persistent. I'll take that as a compliment. Show me this Pantheon's last champion. Sly, you're coming out of retirement? Whoa, I'm gonna need some serious practice because I don't know what just happened. Instead of going through the Pantheon to get one practice round every 10 minutes or so, I entered the Hall of the Gods to face him head on. After much trial and error, I realized that I had only a very small window to squeeze in a single poke between attacks. Sometimes I'd barely miss the mark. Thus, a slight change in charms was needed to extend my range even further. As a result, I was landing my swings. More importantly, I was learning Sly's methods. He likes to slash twice, then spin attack in the air, then leaves himself open on the way down. Similar to Grim, that was the only time I went in for an attack. I purely focused on evading him during all of his other moves. I could only keep that up though until his last phase began. And boy was this a toughie. I don't even know how to describe this. He's darting around the room crazier than Master Yoda did. There's only a brief little window of opportunity to strike after he's done flipping with his nail and it's hard to consistently land it while keeping yourself safe at the same time. I was able to win after 15 minutes of attempts, but unfortunately, that was in the Hall of Gods. Now I gotta beat him at the end of the Pantheon, which means I'll have lost my rhythm when facing him over and over again, especially when the gaps between rematches grow larger when I lose before I even get to him. Needless to say, it felt discouraging with each loss. I knew I could beat him though. I'd done it in the Hall of Gods once, so I could do it in the Pantheon once. One, two, spin attack, strike. One, two, spin attack, strike. Wait it out, wait it out, wait it out, strike. You wanna get nuts? Come on, let's get nuts. Uh, uh, uh. I am one with the force and the force is with me. I am one with the force and the force is with me. I am one with the force and the force is with me. <sighs> GG Sly. The first three pantheons have been beaten, which unlocks the last one needed to reach 112%, the pantheon of the night. This is gonna be tough. Made it to the finale on my first try. Maybe it's just my playstyle, but I thought that bunch was easier than the last Pantheon. Although, I gotta give kudos to Soul Tyrant for catching me off guard with the fake death. Despite that, the Godseeker is convinced the ruler of this Pantheon will silence me forever. Bring it on. Who is this god of gods you speak of? So, we meet again, brother. This time, there's no infection holding you back. Initially, I thought I was going to have a fighting chance against the Pure Vessel, but that's because I thought his moves were going to be similar to his original form. He freaking owned me! To the practice hall, little knight! <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna train here just like I did with Sly. I spent the rest of the day in this hyperbolic chamber trying to figure out how in the world the Pure Vessel could be beaten. This battle broke me. Sure, there have been other times in this game where matters seemed hopeless, but only the pure vessel made me put down the controller and call it quits for the rest of the day. And not just that day, I began running through the whole fourth pantheon during the next day and quit because I still couldn't win. Even if I could beat pure vessel, I'd feel so out of practice by the time I got to him because of the nine brain dead bosses I'd had to defeat beforehand each time. Then came day number three, one and a half hours into my gaming session, and I have had enough of this. Just as I swore this would be the end, I blunder into a terrible start. Get it together, Andrew! The Soul Pillar shouldn't be where you mess up. Whenever Pier Vessel posed in preparation for a sword fight, I learned from my hours of practice that pogo attacking from above was the best method. As for the rapid soul daggers, that's when I had to face danger head on and dash through them with Shade Soul to not only avoid them, but to land chip damage as well. The only time I would heal is when Pier Vessel was stunned, two masks at the max, and even that was too greedy at times. I wasn't feeling confident about this round either. I was making mistake after mistake. 
Heck, I was jumping constantly, sometimes forgetting to attack. I made it to the second phase, but I just accepted at this point that I was gonna have to do the whole thing over again. One more blow, and I was a goner. Yet, I risked it all for the pogo attacks. Oh, those tendrils. I can't tell you how many times I've died because of them. Hold up. Am I cooking? Heal. Freaking heal. Run. Freaking run. Watch out for the aura. Stay away from the circles. Tendrils incoming. Overhead attack. He's going for it again. You fool. Now heal. Ah, I misclicked. I'm done for. I, I. It's over. I actually won when in the moment I thought I was doomed to lose. After awakening with my fellow siblings, I took a victory lap back to the temple of the Black Egg, crushed the Hollow Knight in its weak, pathetic, infected form, and earned the pure completion achievement. And that's how I 112%ed Hollow Knight. Please support the channel by going to andrewcolletteshow.com and use promo code Andrew to get 5% off eShop codes. Like and subscribe while you're at it. You all have a good one. Thanks.